A very good afternoon to all of you present here. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us. My name is Ms. Serena In. I'm a clinical psychologist, lecturer and program director in the Bachelor of Science Psychology in IMU. So um, just before we begin, I would like to just uh, address a few housekeeping rules. So we have muted the microphone for all attendees. And if you have any questions and feedback, please use the Q&A panel, as you can see in your Zoom um, window, all right? And we will address your questions at the end of the session. And please take note that this live talk session is also recorded. Okay, so I am very honored to introduce to you the two very special speakers we have with us today. The first speaker is Dr. Frederick Bohols, who holds a master's in organizational psychology and a PhD in clinical psychology. For eight years, he served as program head and associate professor in the Masters in Clinical Psychology at Health University, while also teaching as an adjunct professor at North Central University in Arizona. He also taught in different universities in Philippines and in Singapore while holding organizational consultant positions with MNCs and clinical engagements with other organizations in the past. So currently, he is an associate professor and our present head of department of psychology in our beloved university. And secondly, joining him for the second half of this session will be our um, very beloved um, alumni as well, uh, Miss Dania Danaraja. And just a little bit about her. She uh, was from a cohort a few years ago, and I'll let her introduce herself later. But during her study in IMU, she organized various workshops, talks, events, and she was really very active with um, working out mental health and looking at identifying right resources to help um, people in her community cope. She even started a social project called We For Us, which is a virtual support group initiative that is facilitated by clinical psychologists and various psychology graduates. Currently, she is pursuing an honours year at Murdoch University, Australia, and she hopes to further her studies later on in Masters in Clinical Psychology. So without further ado, I'll just pass the floor over to Dr. Frederick, and he will take the first half, followed by Ms. Dania. Thank you very much, everyone. See you soon. Thank you very much, Serena. Uh, thank you very much for coming on board as well. I know you're not feeling very well today. Uh, but part of the job. I appreciate that very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Let me welcome you to our virtual open day live talk. And I have been tasked this afternoon to, to let you take a sneak peek into our lives as psychologists to talk about careers in psychology. Um, I usually kid my students when I ask them what led them into psychology and I immediately interrupt them and tell them, no, no, don't tell me, I know why you're here. You're, 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 you're trying out psychology because as in many, if not all students, you are psychologically disturbed. And then they would go like, what? And I would usually um, go back and tell them that something must have disturbed you enough to, to lead you into to the field of psychology. And it usually opens up a lot of experiences because true enough, a lot of people enter into the field not even knowing what to do after they, they finish their bachelor's degree. So now let me tell you a little about what psychologists do after, after their degree. And maybe describe a little bit about the different fields uh, and the different specializations in psychology that define each individual's different careers in the field. So it usually starts from asking, who am I? To what will I become? Um, as I present to you the following slides uh, describing the different fields in psychology and the careers in psychology, I would also be describing to you what I do because um, I, am, I am basically um, 
shuttling between two fields, uh, the, the field of clinical psychology and the field of industrial organizational psychology. And that was a source of confusion for me because, because what drew me to psychology was, was what I saw in, in the movies like Silence of the Lambs or like The Exorcist or like The Three Faces of Eve. But then again, later on, I found out that 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 particular field of psychology, which I will describe later on as clinical psychology, wasn't offered in our, in our university. So I was sort of forced to take on a different specialization, which is in industrial organizational psychology. More on that later on. So even the, even the experience of, of, of my bachelor's degree onto my master's and onto my, my PhD later on, it was also uh, an experience, a journey of sorts from who am I to what will I become. So let me describe to you a few areas of psychology. Standing on the ground of the three basic goals of scientific psychology, which are number one, the understanding. As a scientific field, um, psychology aims to understand, to predict, and to change human behavior that includes thoughts and emotions and whatnot. So this is the threefold go goals of psychology, the understanding, the prediction, and the helpful alteration or change of human behavior for the betterment of society and humankind. So when I discuss the different fields of psychology, these are the three goals that pervade across any specialization for that matter. Okay. One of the most popular fields of psychology is the field of clinical psychology. This is where um, specialists in the field uh, of clinical psych basically um, treat people with, with mental health problems. They do assessment, they give psychological tests, uh, they inter interpret psychological test results, they analyze personalities, and um, they do clinical interviews. And more importantly than that, they do psychotherapy. So professionals in this field assess and treat people who exhibit mental or emotional disorders ranging from the expected repercussions of everyday life to extreme unsettling COVID-like conditions such as these times. As a matter of fact, uh, a lot of people have been ringing my phone looking for psychotherapy due to, to the stresses that, that this pandemic has brought us. So this is the field of clinical psychology. We do therapy, we do diagnosis, we administer psychological tests, and more importantly than that, we listen to your stories of pain and we journey with you as you search for, for healing and, and the betterment of, of mental health. That's the field of clinical psychology and that's the area which Malaysia seriously lacks in. More on that later on. Another field, of clinical psych another field of psychology is the field of social psychology. This, this field basically asks questions such as, um, how does the individual behave with or without other people? How does the individual behave with or without social pressure? Why are different female body types in fashion? Why does a culture revere young people? Which jobs have organizational status? Why is it that you don't feel very comfortable when, when you're in an elevator and even though when there's no rule that everybody should face the door in a, in a lift, why should you face the door? Why don't you just turn around and say hi, right? Why, social psychologists say, well, it's because we have this invisible personal bubble they call personal space that we, that we protect and we feel uh, invaded when a person, you know, just puts his face right in front of us. And, and, and all sorts of topics that are very extremely interesting in social psychology. As a career, however, social psychologists usually um, serve with uh, government and non-government organizations in terms of social policies, migration, adoption, and whatnot. So this, this field is basically specializing on 
the 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 social impact on on human behavior. Okay, that's a, a very very uh, important field as well. Closely related to clinical psychology, which I mentioned earlier, is the field of counseling psychology, um, helping people cope with everyday demands. Um, everyday decisions, everyday stressors, strains of life through interpersonal problems and dialogue. This is the, the specialization of counseling psychologists. Um, relationships, um, husband-wife relationships, parent-child relationships, conflict in the family, um, failure to manage your life. Um, this is where counseling psychologists play play a very important role. You would see them in counseling centers, you would see them in, uh, based in schools and, and uh, even in, in, in multinational corporations. They usually have a counseling, counseling outfit that provides employee wellness programs. So that's the field of, of counseling psychology. While they don't necessarily do clinical diagnosis, they help people with everyday distresses in life, okay? And our university at IMU here, we have a master's program in, in counseling psychology. In a couple of years or so, uh, we'd be offering a, a master's in, in clinical psychology, okay? Another field, however, uh, is called the IO psychology. Um, I, I think I remember I told you a while ago, uh, although my first love was in clinical psychology, I was, I was by force of, of uh, an availability of the program, I was forced to take IO psychology as a field of specialization for my master's. And, and, um, and I realized later on that, that you know, the three, the three goals of psychology still pervades, even in the corporate world, we still, we were still concerned with understanding human behavior at work. We were trying to predict employee performance on the job. And we also um, uh, facilitated training programs for, for, uh, for the betterment of, of mental health in the workplace. We created training programs organization development designs to help change performance in order for the employees to achieve organizational goals. So this is the expertise of industrial organizational psychologists. Uh, on the average, you spend eight hours a day at work. That's practically, practically one third of your life. So this field of psychology studies our relationship to work the match between your personality and the job, job productivity, development, enhancement, career counseling, retirement planning, job variety, cross-training. These are all under the field of IO psychology. A highly specialized offshoot of IO psychology came much, much later in the, in the 70s and 80s. And this field is now a very much popular and independent field, independent of IO psychology, um, now called consumer psychology. Um, they basically specialize uh, on studying factors that influence individuals' buying behavior. Why do people buy this? How do, how do children perceive a mall versus parents' perception of a mall, okay? How should we design a mall? How should we design a restaurant to increase people's appetite? And they found out that they, they maximize the color yellow, orange, that increases appetite. Hmm. Watch out for color, orange colored restaurants. They're there to get you. So, so basically consumer psychologists find jobs in marketing, consulting, and usually in the corporate world. Okay. Yet another field of psychology is school psychology. They, psychologists in this, in this area, they do research on how individuals learn or acquire knowledge. They also look into the emotional and intellectual development of students. Consequently, their findings 
help design and redesign curricula and learning workshops and models. They tried to conceptualize uh, how people learn. They found out, for example, that, that people could just take on seven bits of information, plus or minus two. Anything beyond that, you know, information flies over their head. School psychologists, for example, uh, in collaboration with cognitive psychologists found out that, you know, you present a PowerPoint slide such as this one, after 20 minutes, the audience's mind just doze off. They just fly up, fly off, and they don't listen to you. Although they look like they, they're still listening to you, um, they're, they're wondering now. So this is one of the few, one of the many, one of the many things that school psychologists do. Um, basically, you'd see them teaching, you'd see them designing, you'd see them managing universities and colleges. This is the field of school psychology. For many among you who have seen the criminal mind, in the mind of the criminal um, and sorts like that, um, criminal behavior, basically this, this belongs to the field of forensic psychology, okay? So these are the psychologists who study criminal behavior, the making of the criminal, the type of factors that shape a person to become a criminal. Um, so we can appreciate this branch of psychology because this, 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 this area of psychology works well with, with law enforcement and the judicial system, okay? Um, Mark Douglas, for example, one of the pioneers of the behavioral science unit of the FBI, um, he was one of the founders of the BSU, the Behavioral Science Unit of the FBI in the 1970s. He wrote a book uh, in the mind of the criminal and, and he found out that serial killers, for example, are, you know, they, they don't look crazy. They don't sound crazy. They're, they look like very, very normal. They could be your next door neighbor there. Um, so, so research is, 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 is ongoing now as to, as to criminal behavior and the pattern. And they found out, for example, that serial criminals would, would have a signature and, 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 and the things that we watch on TV, very exciting field. Uh, unfortunately, we don't, we don't offer that in our university. I'm not so sure if there's a university in Malaysia that offers that. Um, I heard UK and the US offers um, uh, a specialization in forensic psychology. However, forensic psychology is, is basically an offshoot of clinical psychology. So, so clinical psychology is basically the mother, the mother field that gave birth to, to this field of, of forensic psychology. Okay, very exciting field. Um, a less known field for that matter is called engineering psychology. Um, psychologists in this area, they help design and redesign machinery, tools, gadgets, and how these instruments should be made compatible with human behavior. Um, so man-machine compatibility, that's the field of engineering psychology. Um, I think it was one engineering psychologist who designed a, a computer keyboard that was shaped like a ball because he says that when you put your hand like this, it's more ergonomic than typing on a keyboard like this. It puts a strain in your wrists resulting to carpal tunnel syndrome, okay? But apparently his design didn't take off and uh, it didn't market very well. But you know, this is one of the few, one of the many, many things that engineering psychologists do, high, hybrid uh, area in, in, in psychology, okay? So what, what are our prospects in Malaysia? To be more realistic, okay? Unfortunately, counseling psychologists ratio to the, gen, ratio to, to the general population is very, very wide ratio there, desperate ratio there, one is to 52,000, when the ideal should be about one is to 200 or 300 at most, okay? And it's worse with clinical psychologists because the ratio is one is to 800,000 people, okay? And many of them are lumped in KL. What about the other states, okay? 
who's going to serve the mental health needs of the populations there. So as a career, clinic, the field of counseling and clinical psychology, the market is still too, is so wide there that I don't think you, you, you'd be out of a job if you finish clinical or counseling psychology. And here's a worse picture here in Malaysia. If you talk about child psychologists, the ratio is one is to 2.5 million. Okay just give you statistics there to help you to help you decide which area of psychology you might be interested in so employment is growing because of increased demand for psychological services in schools government hospitals especially social service agencies mental health centers substance abuse treatment clinics consulting firms and private companies and as core participants in healthcare practices like you'd see psychologists everywhere, okay? For example, here's a list of companies that our alumni has been employed in here in Malaysia. Just, just uh, a rundown of, of current companies. And you'd see IMU graduates there. Okay, here, here's another page. Okay, so my dear participants, welcome to the world of psychology. I hope we can help you choose a job you love so that one day you will never have to work a day in your life. Psychologists, most if not all of them, we love our jobs. We are not working. Serena has fever right now, and she's still there. I hope you can get a rest after this, this presentation. Thank you very much. That will be for my talk. One of our alumni, I would like to welcome. Let me stop sharing first, and let me welcome Dania to share with you her experience as a psychology bachelor's graduate in our university as she shares with you her passion and what she's doing now. Please welcome Dania. Hi everyone. Uh, so thank you for having me, Dr. Frederick. And uh, just give me a moment while I share my screen and my slide. Okay, there we go. So um, I'm a BSc Honours graduate from IMU. So um, I was in the class of uh, PS117, which was in 2017, and I graduated in 2020. Uh, so today I'm just here to share my journey with you as I completed my three years uh, bachelor's degree with IMU. So a little backstory of how I ended up in IMU is that uh, I when I was like um, 19, I think I had the privilege to actually uh, come to IMU with my parents just to look at the campus and look at the courses that they have. And I had set my mind to study for medicine specifically. But however, when I went to IMU, I immediately changed my mind to study for psychology. And simply because of how uh, our course structure was, and I never stopped. Uh, I mean, I, as in, I never regretted my decision that back then. And so, I am you studying in IMU for the past three years. I think uh, from to look back from the day I started and to reflect upon it, I've definitely become a better version of myself. So, what I liked about psychology program at IMU is that the diversity of their causes itself. Like, as you can see from what Mr. Frederick has, uh, Dr. Frederick had uh, shared about the career pathways that we have, 
even in our course structure, there's a diversity in it. There's various subjects that you can get exposed to basically towards the specific uh, career paths that are available in psychology. And just like any other uh, uh, undergraduate student, I used to think that if I study psychology, I can only become a counselor. But however, uh, coming to IMU, I realized that studying psychology has a variety of career paths that you can actually embark on. And uh, some of it, uh, forensic psychology and clinical psychology, um, industrial organization psychology, and IMU course had all of that basically during, their, uh, during my time. And I'm sure they have more at this point of time as I've seen the updated uh, course structures. So some of the subjects that I really liked while I was studying in IMU was uh, neuropsychology, biopsychology, and clinical psychology. Research especially was my favorite. I didn't know that I would be the person that liked research, but the way that uh, my lecturers actually bought research and um, taught us the importance of it, especially in psychology. Uh, basically, we are the only ones who will be well-versed in research where we know in and out of how important it is, especially in Malaysia. Um, our research is uh, still needs a lot of development to be done. And I think IMU has been doing, especially our psychology department has been doing an extremely good job at it because I think um, uh, at this point of time, I'm currently working on publishing my paper as well. And this was the same paper that I had built when I was still an undergraduate student. So um, that is something that I really like in our psych program. And as well as uh, our mentor mentee program, back in my time, we were assigned uh, with, with lecturers who were intended to invest their time and energy to work on our personal development not only our personal development, but as well as help us through getting uh, used to the uh, university life. Because as a first year student, I was really anxious. Like I have no idea of what my future was ahead. And it was, um, how do I say? And coming to IMU among the psychology department itself, I felt welcomed. And I was not uh, lost at any point because our lecturers and were very uh, uh, very focused on making sure that we have all the information we need in order to make ourselves uh, more comfortable as we continue our journey for the past three years, especially for me, that's what I had felt. And uh, another thing about our psych program that I liked was that I had a lot of opportunities to put theories into practice. Our lectures, um, and the materials that we had were extremely uh, conducive and they're very informative and interactive. There's not one day that I would leave the class thinking that that was a boring class, never. But instead I would feel like, what did I just learn? Like it will be, uh, you'll be fed with information that leaves you mind blown, literally. And every day I'm sure you'll be looking forward to lectures just as I was. And it was really great. And secondly, uh, was that I was, as Ms. Serena has uh, uh, said just now, I was really active in extracurricular activities, even um, with my seniors uh, and myself and some of my psychology classmates, we started a psychology club in IMU. Basically, it was a platform where you can put your ideas into a reality where any workshops or mental health events or anything at all related to the psychology that you have an idea and you don't know how to bring this to the public. And that was a psych club. And I am truly blessed to have great seniors because they have never uh, left our side basically as the juniors. I felt like they were really, really kind enough to help us meet their busy schedule, especially when if they were in their final year. As you can see here, I'm going to share some of the pictures. This is the picture basic, the entire psychology cohort. You can see from PS117 until the elders. 
and we this was our psych week and this is a a very uh, com every year it's an annual thing for our new department to do a psych week i'm not sure how it's going to be done this year due to the pandemic and the online classes but basically on campus this is how it is everybody comes together we have various of activities that allows people to understand about psychology because even at this point people still think that if you graduate psychology you are going to read minds and honestly i was also the person who thought that oh that means i will be able to read minds but of course not it's not like that you will get your answer when you start your classes in imu i guess and the most memorable day uh, during my three years journey was that as i mentioned the psych club was the greatest platform ever that was given to us in imu because throughout one year we had many many opportunities to reach out to the public anything related to mental health matters and psychology as well and like dr fredrick said in malaysia psychology service is very limited especially uh, in kl it's very uh, concentrated in our kl area but so taking this into our hands i mean as juniors what we did is we went all out um, doing a lot of workshop mental health uh, workshops and uh, events and we had a lot of people who come who joined us and then uh it was really great because it was it was happy to, i we were happy and i was happy to see that people are learning a lot from me and people have started accepting that mental health is an important part and it, it was we are almost there to a point where people are uh, seeing mental health as important as physical health and i'm very grateful for imu and especially our lecturers to give us the opportunity to, to come to this point and here actually a uh, psychology club was uh, named as the best social club because we had run 12 mental health forums i think i think more than that uh, in a year through and this was the time where we were actually doing our thesis project and tons and tons of assignments and yeah it, i think it was worthwhile and here's here are some of the pictures from imu news some of our lecturers as we can see dr shamla is there uh dr pauli uh miss puvisha uh, a clinical psychologist she has um, also her private clinic and they um, our relationship as what i can remember doesn't just end in classrooms uh we were able to connect even outside classrooms uh and i've learned a lot um both in the classroom and outside and putting theory into practice was something that stood out from imu's uh program here are also a few more pictures um uh, of imu and our lecturers all together and i think the top picture is where all the departments uh lecturers are there uh yes and um, mental health forum basically my area of uh, my area of interest highly lie on uh, clinical psychology so my efforts and work were basically a lot on mental health and but uh during my internship i also had an opportunity to actually uh, to go and uh, explore the industrial psychology part uh so i was interning with a company called human dynamic and my boss was actually someone who worked as a counselor in IMU uh, uh, uh student uh, SDU department and when i walked in for the interview when she called me up she didn't even want to she didn't even have to look at my resume because she knew that i she knew that i was from IMU and that's it and i was working with them for at least 5 to 6 months and then the pandemic happened so that's it actually from my end uh so i will pass to miss serena thank you very much dania for a very interesting sharing and and just um telling us about your journey as well and i i'm sure you know i can just see from your expressions it's just a memorable time for you yeah and and you're very fortunate yes. that your entire experience was with a very close knit group as well and and you had a lot of face to face yeah. yeah unfortunately i think this year um it's just been challenging as a carry over from last year so there are several questions in the q and a box so i will um 
mostly they are directed at uh, Dr. Frederick. Okay. Um, and if you would like to add on as well, um, Dania, feel free to, yeah? Okay, so the first question is, sure. how is psychology different from psychiatry? Okay, psychiatry is a field under medicine. So aside from neurology, cardiology, obstetrics and gynecology, they have another uh, uh, specialization in medicine called psychiatry. Psychiatrists also deal with, with mental health uh, problems, uh, but as a medical, uh, medical specialization, they stand on the assumption that mental health problems are largely um, neurologically, biochemically, uh, genetically uh, based. Consequently, therefore, their interventions are are biological, neurological in nature. That's why they are the ones who prescribe medicine. Um, psychology, on the other hand, we also deal with mental health uh, problems. And we do have a, a deep respect for the field of, of psychiatry, but we also stand on a different assumption that, that says mental health is more complex than just pure uh, neurology and biology. A lot of factors are also interplaying with the complexity of mental illness, such as parenting, such as trauma, such as uh, pollutants, such as other factors in the environment converging and, and uh, putting the person under duress, uh, leading to mental health problems. So consequently, our our therapy is psychosocial in nature. That's why we do um, psychotherapy, counseling. Um, so, so these are different fields that work together as well. Yeah, thank you very much. And so it's uh, very apt that the follow-up two questions that are the similar in nature is related to that. So um, what's the difference between counts then counseling and clinical psychology? Hmm, I knew that would come. <laughs> um, let me share then one of my screens here. Sure. And this is from one of my presentations a long time ago. Um, so can, can you see my screen? This is, okay, this is for my lecture in trauma debriefing. So you can forget debriefing for now. So you can see counseling here in terms of the, the, the degree of intensity of mental illness Imagine this as a normal curve. This is where counseling, um, this is the kind of clientele that counseling accommodates. And, and if you see here, this orangey part here, which is a large overlap between counseling and therapy, but therapy's tail here it goes beyond and extends here to this part in terms of the degree of, of intensity, I would say for lack of a better term, of mental illness. So clinical psychologists would still do psychotherapy with schizophrenics and uh, uh, paranoid individuals with uh, personality disorders, um, while counseling psychology uh, mainly deals with um, um, life problems, um, and marital conflicts, daily life issues. So, so this is where they overlap. A lot of our techniques also largely overlap. They do CBT, psychology also does CBT. They do narrative therapy, psychology also does narrative therapy. So, well, here in Malaysia, I do notice that, that, that a very clear cut distinction is made. Uh, however, in my experience in other countries practicing in the Philippines, as well as in the US, for example, the fields, don't quite uh, distinguish themselves from each other. And I've seen counselors who do very good psychotherapy and I've seen social workers who do very good counseling. So it also depends on, on which country you, you, you are from. But there are theoretical uh, distinctions between counseling and, and, and clinical psychology, but only in practice, it's not as clear as that. Yes, yes, I agree with you. Thank you very much. And uh, just one more related to clinical psychology is, do you need a master's in clinical psychology to continue PhD in clinical psychology? Or can you master in other areas of psychology 
and then continue your PhD in clinical psychology? It depends largely on the university where you intend to take your PhD. Um, as far as I know, many US universities do not require that you have to have a master's degree in clinical psychology. If your master's is on a different field, you might just need to take 12, 15 units as some sort of a prerequisite before they admit you to a PhD program in clinical psychology. Yeah, I see, thank you. Okay, and we have several questions um, addressed at Dania. Um, so over to you, Dania. First one is, I'm, um, okay, there's, there's several, let me just go in order. order. Okay, the first one is, I'm interested in making a difference can I plan my own events to raise mental health awareness? Yes, definitely you can. Because there are many ways you can actually approach your ideas to, like I said, the psychology club. We even have a social media account, as I remember. So you can just drop them. Once you get enrolled, if you wish to do so, you can just reach out to them. But if you do not wish to do that, you can just walk up to one of our lecturers and tell them you have this idea, they'll be so glad to hear you out, definitely. And if you're nervous to do that, also you have your own mentor. Mentors are like your friend. You can tell them anything at all and they are there to help you. So definitely you can do that. And IMU has uh, many um, organizations, for example, IMU Cares itself. And if your idea and they're interested in your ideas, they will also have helped you in funding. Because I remember I've written a lot of uh, funds letters because we do not have that kind of money, but they were glad to uh, give us some. And I think we had done quite a number. Yeah, that's possible, definitely. Wow, that's so helpful. And another question related to um, someone interested perhaps in starting their study soon. What advice would you give for a first year, mm -hmm. Dania? First year student, yeah. What advice I would give to a first year student? Don't be afraid to talk to our lecturers. Yeah, that is mainly it because I, I know it's uh, going to a university, studying university life is very different from college and school because the entire setting is different and, and it's daunting at times for your lecturers. And there's also SDU. SDU you can just walk in uh, uh, to uh, I'm so sorry, Dania. I think you're breaking up a little bit. So I'll just jump in. Um, SDU, as Dania has mentioned twice, stands for Self-Development Unit. It's the service that IMU provides to all our students, whether undergraduate or postgraduate. And um, they, they, they conduct workshops for personal development. They also have um, um, complimentary counselling clinical psychology services to all our students who need any additional support. Yeah, so they're really, really active and, and they're really very approachable. So that's why she's mentioned SDU twice in her story. Yeah. So yeah, I think you're back now, Dania. Would you like to carry on? Yeah, I'm so sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, did you did you have more to say to that or you're done for that question? Oh, no, that's, I was okay. done actually. Yes. Oh, I see. Sorry. Okay, and then one more question related to the coursework. Um, for you, uh, are the were the assignments heavy? How did you manage between course workload and doing community work on the side? Wow. Yeah. Um, actually, our assignments, I wouldn't uh, consider them as heavy, but it, uh, it's predictable because because it, you, when you're in degree, it, you should be expected to have classes and tests and assignments all at the same time. And I'm so sorry, my dear. I think we, we can't hear you so clearly. Um, Hello? Are you there? Okay, um, why don't you take a, a minute? Uh, we'll come back to you in, in just a bit. Is that okay? All right, so the next few questions are related to the program itself and um, I'll, I will address this to Dr. Frederick first and, and if need be, I'll, I'll supplement as well, yeah? So what are the um, qualifications needed to join the degree program? Would you hmm. like to take it or? I think it'd be 
uh, our our program director, Serena, uh, <laughs> okay. will be in a better position to, sure. to know the details of these things. Sure. Okay. So I'll just take the next several uh, few questions related to the program itself. Sure. Uh, for qualifications for a degree program, as is the standard across many major private universities is a pre-university. Uh, the only difference is the specific entry requirements that are the minimum entry points. So for that, you will have to um, show us your forecast or your actual pre-university results and you will have to go through the admissions office. Okay, so um, I'll give you more information right at the end of the talk for where you can approach our team one-on-one um, -on -one, and we have a more uh, targeted one-on-one -on -one consultation this Sunday. So you can specifically bring your results as well. Then you will get very specific um, advice, okay? So, but gener the general rule of thumb is a pre-university, okay? Either a foundation, um, acceptable foundation by our program brochure, which we can also get you in connected with for you, as well, or the major pre-universities like um, Australian, uh, British, yeah? Okay, and the next one is, are there any internships included in the program? Yes, so we are proud that our degree has a um, industrial placement component in our program. And it's a, it's a big deal because all our students who go through that really have no issues finding a job after that. And, and they learn, I mean, in addition to what Daniel has already shared, during the program, you get so much um, um, exposure to um, not just knowledge, but you know, out of class learning experiences, um, real life skills. So in the internship, you actually go and learn hands-on in the specific corporations or the site of your choice. Yeah, so that's a, a semester, um, it's at the end. So it's a semester that most of our students look forward to and they really have no issue finding a job after that. So they're very confident by the time they graduate from our B site. Yeah. Um, Dania, are you, are you back with us? Yeah, maybe you want to jump in. Yes, to, I'm back. Yeah, related to coursework. Yes, I'll, I'll make it a quick one. Yeah. Yes, I'll, I'll make sure it's a quick one before I get No problem. To yeah, yeah. Uh, but like I said, uh, I was doing uh, other activities and assignment as well. But I would say that our schedule was spread out nicely where I can actually balance it without effort. But yes, uh, finishing assignments on time was a bit of a struggle, but I think it's uh, common among other degrees as well. And it's something to be expected because when you're in the working world, there's no time where you can stop working. It's just a continuous thing. So yes, in IMU, I think it's basically possible to complete your studies and also do the things that you like because our schedule is spread out nicely. And Okay, no worries, but I, I think we got the... Are you, are you back? No worries, Dania. Um, it, it's okay, I think we, we heard most of your answers, but if you would like to supplement, feel free to use the... Um, Q&A or the chat box to just add on your response. Would that be easier for you, Dania? All right. I, I hope the attendee who asked this question um, at least got the gist of what she was trying to say. Yeah. So sorry about that. So as you can see, um, sometimes going online, we do we do have our own challenges. Yeah. And, and something everyone everywhere is putting up with. Okay. So the next question about the program is, if you start your studies in February, will it be online or face-to-face? -face? So yeah, unfortunately with the pandemic situation in Malaysia uh, being quite um, you know, severe at the moment, uh, for the upcoming semester, we are planning for it to be all online, just to be on the preventive side and to really safeguard the safety of all our students. Yeah, so you won't be the first cohort actually, the, the cohort just before you who started in September, um, they were the first cohort that started everything on online. And just before that, there was also another cohort that started their class last February, two March. Weeks. Yeah, and they only <laughs> experienced face-to-face -face for two weeks. So, I mean, it's not ideal. We wish we could really meet all of, you know, our students face-to-face, yeah. -face, but this is a time, I think, worldwide. The, the education industry is just, we're doing what we can to stay safe and, and we're all in the same boat in our, in our way, yeah? So... For this upcoming semester, it will be online, but 
prayerfully, hopefully, things get better in the months to come. And we, who knows we, if universities everywhere could resume face-to-face -face as well. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. Okay, and um, if, if there are face-to-face -face classes, what are precautions taken by MU to ensure patient safety? Yeah, so um, as of now, the new intakes coming in for psychology, it, it, there won't be face-to-face, -face, so that won't be the issue. Having said that, IMU uh, maintains very, very strict. So the campus is currently officially closed as well. Uh, but, you know, um, as a rule, as a general rule, our university has very strict um, protocols in place to following very strictly by the Ministry of Health's uh, regulations and the Ministry of Higher Education regulations. So uh, we do, we follow all the typical uh, SOP and, and it, perhaps even more. Yeah, so... Uh, we also have a medical clinic um, that's open to the public at the moment, and that's on appointment basis. Um, even all the frontliners, the healthcare workers in that setting are required to wear not just a face mask, but a face shield as well. So there's, and, and there's a, a lot of social, um, physical distancing being practiced, and the campus is regularly uh, disinfected and sanitized all over. Um, it's really sterile in a very good way in this present, so I, I, can, I can vouch for that, yeah? Okay, so that's the measure. Okay, another question about pre-university. Um, for pre-year qualifications, would you take foundation from other private universities? Would it be a science foundation? Um, yes, it's acceptable, but this is handled, uh, the first level is handled by the admissions office. They will compare your um, foundation to what is acceptable. Yeah, so most of the time it's acceptable, but we have to see the actual subjects and the 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 CGPA that you got, yeah? Okay, this one can be for you, um, Dr. Frederick. Do you need recommendation letter to be enrolled in counseling master's? Ah, the master's in counseling program. Okay. Um, would you like to take it or? <laughs> um, I, Nicole would be in the better position here, but uh, uh, I believe as in, I, I believe the, the students are not required to have recommendation letters. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. So sorry, I'll, I'll take this then. Yeah, um, recommend, there's a, actually typical entry into ma mental health programs, there is that requirement. So uh, Masters on Counseling will try to request for that. Yeah, as an additional ah, okay. requirement. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Thank you. Thank you for that. A lot of um, things I don't know. I'm still learning to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Okay, so there are a lot of specific questions and I really thank you, the audience. Thank the audience really for, for being so vested. Uh, I'll try my best to answer uh, as well, both of us, yeah? Mm, how much can a fresh graduate earn in the marketplace? We're talking about bachelor psychology graduate. Um, hmm. would, you, would you be able to take that? Um, there's a lot of variability here, also depending on your experience. Um, for a bachelor's degree holder who gets employed in a consulting firm, for example, uh, they could easily start ranging from three, three to four, five to five thousand. And um, as experience is as experience is gathered, as different positions are are taken on by by the person three to five years uh, experience would be almost equal to a master's level uh, psychologist. So if, if you have three to five years experience, for example, on the job, plus master's unit, if not master's degree, then that could, that could also start, start from a range between three, five to six to seven, really depending on, on, on the organization. Um, um, multinational companies pay higher, uh, local companies pay a bit lower. So there's a wide range, a wide range of, of uh, salary scaling there. Yeah, that's, that's right. And um, also there's another question about um, the bachelor's psychology is it recognized by British Psychological Society as some schools require for postgrad program I, I can take that um, we are recognized as in many of our graduates who have applied to British 
universities or universities in the UK or neighboring countries didn't have problems getting into postgrad programs. Yeah. So that's what we mean. If you're saying recognized in that way, yes. So, so our students, many of our graduates have not had any problem um, carrying on their studies to um, UK yeah. universities. That's right. Okay. And um, okay. There's one about oh, psychological service. So this is in, in general, I think. Um, they're wondering, mm -hmm. yeah, whether from your observation, and I think you mentioned a little bit, is there an increase in demand in psychological services at this time of crisis? Demand, yes, a very, very strong salient increase there. However, um, um, the method of delivery for these services have also been facing challenges because of the, of the pandemic. And so a lot of these centers that offer psychological and mental health services have also gone online. Um, my previous students who are now holding clinics um, and they still come to me sometimes for, for a consult or so. Um, they, they do acknowledge that the demand has increased, but the method of delivery for these services have also been facing challenges in the sense that um, not a lot uh, can, also, um, can also go online. Not a lot of, of clients have the internet facility to go online. So, so there's a, there's a a shuttling between the demand and the ability of, of the service providers and the ability of, of the clients as well to, 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 to avail of these services online. But in terms of demand, there's no question about it. The, the demand has increased. Yeah, so, so there's, a, there's a, I think the question is related to whether the degree is recognized in the UK or um, so another question is whether in Singapore or Australia. I think it depends on what you're asking for. Um, in terms of recognition, if it's to get a job, sh really, we don't see any problems. Like I said, more, our graduates have all been able to get jobs. Um, if you're talking about recognition into entry into a master's program and further, um, the, depending on which country, there's different requirements. So for um, Australia and Singapore, I think it depends on what program you're entering into. You'll have to see um, which university right has the what specific requirements they have. So like Dania is a, an, an example. She's doing her honours with Murdoch University. Um, yeah, yeah, so maybe you want to share a bit more, Dania, about um, Australia recognising your degree? Oh, yes, actually, yeah. Uh, that's a great question, actually. Uh, so in order, if you're looking to uh, going to study your master's in Australia, you will be required to send your degree for an assessment so basically, that's what I did. Fortunately, our, when my assessment went through, IMU's uh, three-year psych degree was considered as their four-year psychology degree. So which means that I actually do not need to do an honors year to go into my master's, but I choose to do so so I can be able to make myself uh, you know, uh, uh, in line with their education uh, system because completely different country. So that was my personal choice. But yes, I use a uh, three years degree is uh, very compact and is enough to cater their four year uh, degree. So that was what I received from that, Australia. Wonderful. That's really assuring will to be hear. giving you a certificate. Yes. And then yeah. you will use that to uh, apply for your master's. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. And so we uh, have not had uh, our graduates have also gone to pursue their masters in Singapore, yeah. And so again, for Australia, I think it's a different university. And following the Australian Psychological um, Society's requirements, I think other private uh, graduates from other degrees from other private universities will also probably have to go through the same procedure. Yeah. So so that that is a standard um, Australian assessment thing. Um, okay. Do we have to be fluent in Malay or English for any of the psychological services? Maybe um, Dr. Frederick can respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> I only have three words I know in, in BM. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I'm not so sure what the question means uh, to, 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 to be qualified for the services, meaning as a service provider. Um, if you're Malaysian, then it would be an advantage if you, if you knew BM. I don't know BM, so I can only I can only take on clients who speak English. 
Um, but it would be a very, it would be a value added to your skills if you know BM, because uh, as a university, we also would want to reach out to the masses and to provide uh, mental health services to them, especially for, for, the, for the marginalized and the underprivileged. But it's not an absolute um, need for you to know BM in order to finish a degree in IMU. They do have requirements for Malaysian citizens, and uh, they do require subjects to be taken, um, which, uh, uh, which focus on culture and language, uh, including BM as well. Yeah, that's right. And um, if you're talking about as a student in the psychology degree, um, we actually do recommend um, your English to be um, I mean, if you start off not really strong, um, it will be a bit of a struggle initially, then we, we will recommend students get additional support for English tutoring, especially if it's getting in the way of your, you know, your studies and, and understanding or even in your performance in presentations, because the, the main medium of your whole degree will be in English as well. So it, it would really help any incoming student to be, to gain a decent mastery of English to be able to do well in the whole, you know, have the best experience in, in your degree. So that's for the studies part. Yeah. But I echo what Dr. Frederick has said as a practitioner myself, um, Malaysian practitioner, I can speak Malay, but I don't have that many clients that I conduct my sessions in Basel, Malaysia. Yeah. And I'm, I'm Chinese as well, but I, I can't really speak Mandarin fluently for, man, for my sessions. So I just pretty much use English and, and, and that's good enough for my for my work. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um, there is one about what is MPU. Okay, um, that is a uh, mata pelajaran umum. Um, translated to English is the general subject that the government Ministry of Higher Education makes compulsory for students in any university to take. Uh, Dania, do you remember taking your MPU? Maybe you want to add on about that. Yes, 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 I do remember. Uh, MPU was really great, actually. <laughs> it was like, uh, I think we had two different types of MPU. Uh, one will be the language, uh, and then the other one was uh, ethics, if I'm not mistaken. I think uh, the, the, the ethics one where we are supposed to, it's very much like history, but it's fun at the same time. Uh, it's also conducted in English, yes. So, and we had a lot of extracurricular activities as well during that MPU. I think for my batch, we did a education session with the Tiratana Welfare Home Kids. Yeah, that's what I remember. Yep, thank you very much. So the full name is Mata Pladran Pengajian Umum. So it's um, general studies, yeah? Okay, yeah. all right. And um, okay, there's one more question about when's the latest to submit application? Ideally, before our intake, which is uh, the orientation week is the last week of February, uh, February 22nd, that week onwards. So, I mean, ideally, if you can do it way before that, so it gives yourself time to also, you know, for the admissions team to process your work and also for us to be able to give you an offer letter and, and you can settle in and, yeah, rather than too late. So, ideally, way before that, as soon as possible. So... I'll just uh, wait a minute if there's any last question from the audience. Yeah. Okay. I think there isn't. So, um, yeah, you can actually put in your application right now itself if you're keen to um, find out more. So, so that is a uh, that's a starting point because we actually have good news. Um, we have our, as I mentioned earlier, we have our virtual open day. Uh, this live talk series is part of that actually. And for this Sunday itself, we have our four, four of our faculty members really present, available online um, for, um, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. this Sunday itself. And you can ask very, very specific one-on-one -on -one about your situation, yeah? Um, your situation or your entry point. So, so please join us if you want to ask even more and, and you, you felt you wanted to, you have more follow-up questions that come up after today's session. And you can also ask many of them, they have experience. Um, one of them who will be on, 
on duty on Sunday that will be there is a, a counseling psychologist, a counselor, a sports psychologist. Yeah. And so feel free to just really come in and have a chat with them. And another good news is that um, IMU is offering for this uh, period an application and registration fee waiver of up to 800 for all programs except for uh, medicine and dentistry. Um, so there are terms and conditions attached to this, but that's a really attractive offer if you ask me. And yeah, so if you want to find out more information, please join us on Sunday. Yeah, it's also list this information is also listed in the chat box. So I think that's it for today. Thank you very much for staying until the end of our live session. Thank you uh, very much, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. We've had a blast and um, look forward to seeing some of you again. Um, all of you again. Take good care, everybody. Join us. Join us. Enroll here. Yeah. Okay, then. Bye-bye. 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 Stay safe.